Hi, in this video I'm going to unbox and review the LG CM2760 Micro Hi-Fi system. Alright, so first thing is the unboxing. Right, straight out of the box, we get the manual. We've got some Philips batteries. Then we've got the little remote. I'm going to open it as I go. This is what the remote looks like. You have power, eject, pos um, volume up, down. Then we come to the power cable and just the packaging. One thing I can bring to attention is this is quite a heavy unit. I can feel these speakers are pretty heavy. Right. So this is what it looks like. Having a look at it. We've got a sub. That's, we've got a woofer on the side here, and we've got a speaker and a speaker. I believe one of these is a dummy speaker. And now the main unit. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that these are relatively heavy speakers. Just having a look if you're interested in the specification. At the back it says 4 ohms and just the serial number. It does not put the wattage on the speaker. Here is the cable. It uh, is actually quite thin. I, th I would have thought it would be a little bit uh, higher gauge. Right, so that's the setup. That's what it looks like. Just to give you an idea of the dimensions of the unit, each speaker, the width of the speaker is uh, 13 centimeters, and the height on the front, you're looking at just over 30, and the back is a little bit less. As you can see, it's uh, got an angle there, so you can see the back size, you're looking at 27 centimeters, and the depth, we're looking at 24. The unit itself, very light, same depth, 24. Uh, the width of the unit is um, 16 and a half. And putting it together, looks very neat. It's got a very shiny finish. Shows uh, the fingerprints <laughs> quite, uh, quite well, which is not a good thing. But then the rest of the unit is the kind of a brushed plastic and that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to connect it up and just give a demonstration. Now for those of you interested, you can just have a look at the back. You've got the left and right speaker connecting connectors and then there is the specifications for in terms of the power. It's 220 to 240 volts, the frequency, and it says 45 watts. Um, it did say on the box and on the advertisement 160 watts and it says RMS 160 watts and it's always a bit misleading when you then pick up the main unit and then you see 45 watts because it can't give you more than it takes so if on the main unit said 145 watts, well it would have to be more, it would have to be about 180 watts. Because So in order to give 160 watts RMS, the first thing would be, this unit would probably weigh about 7 or 8 kilograms, which it doesn't, it barely weighs 3. Secondly, why would it say 45 watts? So actually the power of this thing is 45 watts input. Um, and the efficiency, if you take it at about 80%, then um, yeah, the output power will be a bit less there, probably close to about 30 or 34, 35, somewhere there. So this is misleading. Just be, be careful of that um, when they say 160 watts and it's actually not. And also a telltale sign is if these were really carrying, say if it was 80 watts aside, these would be really thick cable. For example, Here is cable, very high quality copper cable that is about 300 watts RMS. So you can see the difference. Um, this is close to about 15, 20 watts 
RMS in terms of current ca carrying capacity. So don't be fooled by the wattage. I see that uh, they've really exaggerated the, the wattage and I think they caught me as well because I was quite impressed when I saw 160 watts RMS. But anyway, nevertheless, let's connect this up. And the other side. Okay, so now, right, so the most important thing about a radio is how loud is it? And everybody wants to know how loud is a radio? And the best way to answer that question is by taking a sound pressure level measurement. And what sound pressure level <coughs> measurement does is it gives you a numerical value of the decibels that the ray, the um, the uh, measurement tool picks up at one meter from the device. Now in this case I have set the SPL meter to the 80 to 130 range and it's DBA measurement and I will set the, the radio in the best position. I'm going to use some, I've tried some house music and I'm going to use some hard rock heavy metal and I'm, go, I'm going to take the measurement and I will check that it's not distorting because there's no point taking an SPL measurement and saying the radio reaches 110 decibels but actually it was just noise. Okay, so the first test was done using the foreshadowing band and that I'll consider some hard rock. I did set the uh, settings, I played around with the um, different sound fronts. I used the rock, I did try the bass blast. Uh, my opinion is if you're listening to rock music or metal or anything like that, the bass blast will destroy the sound. It's absolutely horrendous. It just literally, it's literally somebody turning the treble on full and the bass on full. Um, and that's the exact opposite of rock music. So you can see that there I did press the bass blast. It did reach 103 decibels, but it's just noise at that point. So it's averaging 95 to 98 decibels at almost full volume where it's still intelligible. I mean, you can still make sense of the sound. I then tried a different uh, band. I put on Boys Noise, some house music. And I just wanted to see if there'd be a difference. So in terms of the bass blast function, the, the bass blast does work quite nicely with house music. It's still very high pitched and it's got a very high treble and bass, but it's, it's manageable. And if you really want to get the loudest sound out of your unit, well then if you're going to use that bass blast, then I'd recommend you listen to like techno, house or like electronica music, um, acoustic. I wouldn't go for it and rock or heavy metal I wouldn't go for it. So in this test I was able to squeeze the SPL up a little bit more. I think I got just over 100 decibels by playing around with the sound fronts, the DSP. Oh, there's jazz, there's that bass blast. You can see the SPL creeping up there. 100 dBs. And I would say it wasn't completely distorting, it was, uh, it was okay. I mean, I could imagine people listening to it like that without saying, oh, it sounds terrible. So that's my um, little SPL test there, and I'm aware that uh, you should be using sine waves and so forth um, and setting up the room in a different way. But... Right. Some features which I'd like to discuss are the clock. Now you can see if I press the remote, I've programmed the time in, and it's currently 4.44 p.m. and there's also an alarm function so you could actually use this as an alarm clock in your bedroom or whatever so you can set the alarm you press the alarm and you can set the time that the alarm goes off and the mode of music for example here I've said it will be alarm on and the time of the alarm for 13 and it will be CD and how you set that unfortunately the manuals that it come with do not tell you how to actually use it so I did work it out and what you need to do is you first you got to set the clock and you press and hold clock then you can see the clock function the clock um, function is now flashing then you can press the clock function one more time and now it's showing you the the four and if you want to increase it you press the next track and if you want to decrease it you press the back track so you want to make it five o'clock then you will press the next track I'm going to put it back to four um, I press the back track there we go you've got to face it to the unit 
some reason is not accepting it. Right, now you can say clock again, and then it's done. Now, for, in terms of alarm, you press the alarm function, you press and hold it, and there we go, it's four o'clock. Now you press it again. Now I want the alarm to go off at say four, say 4.48. There we go. And now it's asking me what um, source do I want it to be CD, memory stick. So now I'm just going to say uh, FM tuner. There we go. And I press the alarm button one more time. And you can also set the volume. Right, so now it's showing you the alarm is on because there's a little uh, icon there. It looks like a clock. And if you switch off the unit, what will happen is at the time of 4, with the time that I set, the micro half hour will come on at the volume that you set it to and with the radio. And as I said, it can be USB, it can be CD. And, and a clever feature is if, there, if you set it to CD and there is no CD, it automatically defaults to the radio. If you set it to memory stick and there was no memory stick, it will automatically default to radio. So you won't oversleep because the unit is clever enough to realize that there was no music on those channels which you, you had set. Right, some other features. Um, I'm just going to switch it back on here. Yeah? The sound choices. You've got this button here which says Bass Boost. Now you get these different DSP programming. We've got Bass Blast. Uh, what else we got here? Um, okay, so this button here is just for the Bass Blast. But then the DSP programming sits here where it says Sound Effect. And that's actually very important. You can see it's got Standard, Pop, Classic, Rock, Jazz, Bass Blast, Back to Normal. Now... I found that the standard is, is is very poor. Classic is fine. Rock is great. And this is one of the first radios that I've actually uh, listened to uh, that actually has a good rock sound. So in terms of my review of this radio, it's actually above average. It can play. I have been playing some hard rock on it. I was playing uh, the foreshadowing. I was playing some metal. I was playing some candle mass. Uh, my Dying Bride and uh, bands like that, it actually sounds all right. And by set playing around with the sound effect, it actually, it one of the features of this radio is this extra bass. And what happens is it, it does have a full sound. For example, if you just look at the room here, Okay, excuse the mess. This room is about five meters by five meters, and this uh, micro half fire really filled up the room. And when I took the sound pressure level meter uh, measurement, SPL measurement, I got up to a hundred decibels in this room, which is actually very loud. So overall, I would recommend this radio. Um, it is. I don't like radios where you haven't got a audio um, headphone option which this one doesn't you can't connect bluetooth speakers to it either the featured functions that are on this remote are not available on the unit so if you lose the remote you're stuck at this price point i haven't found anything better so overall i would recommend this radio in terms of sound quality uh, overall power output and value for money in terms of the marketing, yes, these people lie about the power output. It's very annoying. They should just say it's 30 watts. In my opinion, this radio is 35 watts RMS. Right, I don't want to be too critical about this radio because it does have a excellent feature and that is an outstanding base characteristic if you put this um, micro hi-fi in your living room you will mostly appreciate the fact that the base fills the whole room there's no bluetooth speaker that can compete with this micro hi-fi um, maybe the big that very big jbl i can't the model number escapes me now but this uh, micro alpha is the best I've ever seen in terms of bass response. It's, it's frankly, uh, I could give it a 10 out of 10. 